Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Summer talking to you here. And today I want to talk about the M1 Max Mac Mini that was rumored a long time ago, since the beginning of the year. And I think that not even coming out with the M1 Max MacBook Pros were a sign that Apple is trying to make this Mac Mini more pro than we think. So I think that this Mac Mini is still coming and I think that it will be a great value, but it will be more expensive than we think. I'm sure that Apple will price it a little bit lower than the 14 inch base model, but it will have more specs to choose from. And that's why I think that it will go from around $1,500 to more than $3,000 with this most spec'd out version. But this M1 Max Mac Mini will also be a redesign. And so in this video, I want to go everything that we know about this M1 Max Mac Mini, everything that was leaked and my personal predictions for the future of the Mac Mini lineup. So, before we get started, roll the intro. We saw the first revolution to the Mac Mini on 2020, when Apple released the M1 chip. The M1 Mac Mini was an amazing deal, because it started at $700, $699. It was the perfect computer if you wanted the M1 chip and nothing else. If you had an external display, an external keyboard, an external mouse, you could just use the M1 chip available on the M Mac Mini, which was just incredible. It outperformed every single MacBook Pro in tests at the, at the time with the M1, the MacBook Pro 13 inch and the MacBook Air. Those were less powerful and more expensive, while the Mac Mini carried on a M1 chip with the full fat M1 chip and started only at $700. This was an incredible deal because the Mac Mini had 80GB of RAM, 256GB of storage and the M1 chip. The base model was just incredible, cheap, very very cheap but very very powerful, killing off most laptops and most like desktops at that $1500 price. While if you compare at the same price that Mac Mini, of course taking out the display and the keyboard, then the Mac Mini was the most powerful computer on earth. So yes the $699 Mac Mini was an incredible deal. Of course, you had to buy an external display, keyboard or mouse, but if you already owned one of those, the M1 Mac Mini was insanely good. But then, one year has passed and Apple has released some computers that were more focused and more geared to pros. And that's why I think that Apple should have launched an M1 Max Mac Mini, but they didn't. And let's think for a moment why. I think that Apple not releasing the M1 Max Mac Mini reveals a lot. I think that by releasing an M1 Max Mac Mini at a lower price, for example, than the 14 inch base model, which starts at $2,000, Apple would just kill off their MacBook Pro Pro lineup. Because if you could buy the M1 Max chip or even the M1 Pro chip for less than, I don't know, maybe $1,500 or $1,800 at max, it would simply kill the sales of the MacBook Pro, even if you didn't get anything else like the display or keyboard. Because if you could justify just by an amazing full fat M1 Max chip with 32 GPU cores, 32 gigabytes of RAM, or even 64 gigabytes of RAM for just like $2,500, and you could get an external display for $500 or even less, you would have one of the most powerful chips on earth, the most powerful GPUs, mobile GPUs on earth, and it would pay less than $3,000, which Apple requires you to pay even more for their laptops. So again, I think that the M1 Max, Mac Mini, or even the M1 Pro was too good of a deal to come out with these computers. That, or the chip shortage happened and Apple didn't have enough inventory of their M1 Pros and M1 Max chips, or even the supply chain couldn't handle another computer. And that's why I think that Apple will release this M1 Pro and M1 Max Mac Mini the next time that they launch a new Apple Silicon Mac and that will be with the iMac Pro. Because I think that the iMac Pro is an amazing computer. It's coming out, it's gonna have a 5K display, going probably to start at $3,000, $4,000, but there's a space for the M1 Max Mac Mini. Because if the M1 Max Mac Mini comes with the same internals as the iMac Pro, but without a display, Apple can price it more fairly and accordingly as they want to, not targeting the MacBook Pro consumers that much. And so why, I think that even with the iMac Pro coming with a dual core or even dual M1 Max chip, I believe that the M1 Max Mac Mini will also come with this configuration option if you want to. That's why I think they will call it probably the Mac Mini Pro. Uh, I think that that's a, a quite over weird of a name, but that's possible. It's going to replace the current Intel Mac Mini. And I think that 
it's kind of fun to, to think that the Apple could release an M1 Max Mac Mini with two M1 Max chips and say that this has the same power as the iMac Pro on a very tiny box, which, by the way, is going to be redesigned. According to John Prosser, we're going to see a huge redesign to Mac Mini. First, he says that we're going to have a glass top, just like the old first generation Mac Mini, going back to that retro design. Also, we're going to have an aluminium border, which will be different colors, and at the back, in terms of I.O., we'll have the same I.O. as the Intel Mac Mini, but better, with Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 GB Ethernet, and less USB-A, of course, one HDMI port, and all of the things that you would like to have on a pro computer, you would. Now, on the M1 Mac Mini, we only have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the M1 Max Mac Mini, of course, we're going to have three or four Thunderbolt ports. My speculation, because of this M1 Max limitations only having three Thunderbolt 3 ports, I believe that Apple either having two M1 Max chips on this Mac Mini has an option, you will be able to unlock a six Thunderbolt 3 port computer, or Apple just simply puts three Thunderbolt 3 ports and one USB-C port or two USB-C ports. So again, Apple is going to do every other workaround to keep the I.O. less or more the same, keeping, of course, the same controllers on the M1 Max because th those are limited to three Thunderbolt 3 ports. But those three are full speed and they are independent. So no worries there. I think that Apple will do a great job in terms of I.O. on this M1 Max Mac Mini. But the main thing about this computer and the Mac Mini in general is the value. You can get a Mac Mini M1, like I told you before, for around $700 starting price. You can get even lower by buying refurbished or used. But if Apple comes out with an M1 Pro base model with the beamed M1 Pro that comes on a 14-inch computer and launches it at $1,500 or even $1,200, you're going to have the most competitive computer and desktop that I've ever seen. Because you could get a very cheap display, for example, $200, $300, I have a review on the Dell XPS Ultra Sharp and I gotta tell you, that thing is stupidly good for the price. I only paid $300 and the Ultra Sharp display is 4K HDR and it's very, very good. I ended up returning it because I couldn't justify having it just for a 16 inch display for my laptop. But if I had the M1 Max or even M1 Pro Mac Mini, that would be the display that I would get. It's cheap, it has USB-C and it's very, very good. In my opinion, I think that the, this base model would be the perfect combination for almost everyone. $1,200, <laughs> cheaper than the MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1, you would get it, get the display, get a cheap keyboard, a mouse, and for around $1,500 or $1,600, you would have the most powerful desktop without counting the iMac Pro and the Mac Pro. So <laughs> that would be just insane. The M1 Pro Mac Mini would sell like hotcakes and it would be my recommendation for everyone. Do not like pay extra for that. Forget the M1 Mac Mini, pay extra for that because it would have 16 gigabytes of RAM. You would have even more power in terms of GPU and CPU. So this M1 Pro would be insane. But then it would go up the ladder. Of course, you would have the full fat version of the M1 Pro, which would probably go for $300 more. Now we would pay around $1,500 base price and it would have a Mac Mini with the M1 Pro full fat, 16 GPU cores, 10 CPU cores course 16 gigabytes of RAM too and 512 base storage. Well this would be a very very good deal that I would recommend for people that want a little bit extra performance and they do care about that little bit extra cores on the GPU side and the CPU side. Of course if you're going for the full fat M1 pay a little bit more for extra storage maybe one terabyte and you got yourself a very 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 sturdy and solid computer lower and cheaper than the base 14 inch MacBook Pro. Of course, you would have to buy an external display and keyboard, but that, that Mac Mini would perform even better than a 14-inch MacBook Pro. So, this M1 Pro and M1 Pro baseline would be an insanely good deal. But what about the M1 Max? Well, the M1 Max on the Mac Mini would have, probably in my opinion, three options. Right now, we have two options on the M1 Max MacBook Pros. We have the 24-core or the 32-core GPUs. Of course, you can configure that with 32 gigabytes of RAM or 64. But in terms of the CPU side and GPU side, there's only two options. Well, I think that on the Mac Mini with the M1 Max, we will have three. The base two, like I told you, the, the 32 GPU cores and 24 GPU cores, and then the two combinations of the M1 Maxes, which would be two M1 Max put together on an infinity layer connection, which would connect the two chips and make it as one. So these two chips would have 
probably 20 cores of course plus 32 GPU cores making it 64 GPU cores like 16 high performance cores, 4 high efficiency cores and a lot a lot of very powerful computers. Of course it would start around at 64 gigabytes of RAM and you could go up to 128 which would be 32 32 gigabytes of RAM plus 32 gigabytes of RAM from the M1 Maxis or 64 plus 64. Again, these computers would be just insane. It would be very, very expensive. In my opinion, starting at at least $4,000 or $3,000 because the iMac Pro, which would have this chip, with this type of performance would cost around $5,000. So the Mac Mini with this performance would be insanely expensive. Though I don't think that, and I'm very doubtful still, that Apple will do this because they want to release a Mac Pro. By releasing this dual chip, Mac Mini, they would probably cannibalize some of the sales of the Mac Pro, which would probably start around $6,000 and have this same combination. So, in my opinion, if we see this, it will be an amazing deal, but I wouldn't be 100% sure that we'll get it. So, right now, I think that the M1 Pro and M1 Max, just one chip, it's confirmed, and I think it's pretty, pretty impressive what Apple will be doing with the value of this Mac Mini. Of course, you will still be able to get the M1 Mac Mini and around the March timeline we will get probably a second M2 Mac Mini together with the M2 MacBook Air. This M2 Mac Mini will be insane and it will be a refresh to the M1 Mac Mini which will be an even better deal starting at $700. But again, if you are interested a little bit more power, you have a good external display, a good external keyboard and a good external mouse and you just want a very very powerful tiny machine that you want to, if you want to go to another home and you're another place you can carry it around easily and you want to just have it on your desktop and you work at your secretary then just buy the m1 pro mac mini or even the m1 max if you desire the extra performance and that's why that i think that apple will still release this m1 pro and m1 max mac mini it's too good of a deal to pass on and i think it will be very very cool to have it i will probably not buy it because i have the my m1 max macbook pros and I think that I don't need it, but I will very, be very, very excited to see Apple releasing it, YouTubers comparing it, and then I do my comparisons myself based on their results. So I will have a video if it comes out and when it comes out. I believe it will be around March timeline or April when we see the 27 inch iMac with the M1 Pro and M1 Max and the iMac Pro. I believe that the Mac Pro will come later and so Apple has a little bit of wriggly room to move around and release some more Apple Silicon computers without cannibalizing the sales of each other. And so I think that Apple together with his M1 Max Mac Mini could release uh, an external display, a cheap external display to connect this Mac Mini. Of course this display would cost around a thousand dollars but it will be an add-on to your buy when you are buying an M1 Max Mac Mini. And so you would be able to get a huge incredible probably 4K display with top-notch retina resolution, ProMotion display, mini LED technology by just around a thousand dollars, probably with the same Pro Display XDR design, just lacking some features. And Apple will probably update the Pro Display XDR together with the Mac Pro. And so I think that by doing this, Apple will create an amazing Mac lineup, completing their incredible Apple Silicon transition. But what are your thoughts on this M1 Pro and M1 Max Mac Mini? Are you excited to see this small but very very powerful computer that is a value king and I think that it will sell very well. What are your opinions on it? Leave on the comments down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We are growing. Thank you. My last video, I was very happy to see that you guys liked it very much. My review of the M1 Max MacBook Pro. One month later, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's incredible. It's a little bit long, but go watch it. It's worth it your time. But of course, don't forget to follow my social networks, Twitter and Instagram while you're there. DM me, I might answer, I might not, I will talk about, if you want to open a Discord, let me know and we'll discuss all of these theories and predictions, but this was Texamer talking to you here, bye!